Hey guys, it's Coke from Math Challenge. In today's video, I wanted to talk about math scores in the United States, why I started Math Challenge, and share my vision with a positive message on how our country can get closer to being the most high achieving in math. To start off, let's look at some data from the OECD in 2018. Our country is ranked 37th in the world and is below the global average. The top performing are the Asian countries such as China, Singapore, and Japan. Before I dive into my perceived solution for our country, let me share my personal and cultural differences I have experienced growing up in Japan and the United States. I was born in Japan, but our family immigrated to California when I was about four years old. I went to a public elementary school and for family reasons had to go back to Japan for my middle school years. I realized quickly that I was behind in math compared to my peers. Now the question I get most often is, don't kids in Asia go to school 24 seven? And this is exactly where I want to start. Now I can't speak for all Asian countries but I will speak for what it's like in Japan through my own personal experience. High schools are not compulsory in Japan. Since this is the case, many students study hard during their middle school years to be able to score well enough on their entrance exams to be granted into a prestigious public or private high school. A lot of studying is done after school at cram schools, which I have also attended. Some families will elect their kids to take entrance exams to get into middle schools, in which case the pressure is early from such a young age. Thankfully, my family moved back to the United States at the start of my high school because I probably would not have gone into many schools in Japan. Growing up in the United States, I feel like there's a lot of after school fun centered around joining a sports team, taking dance or art classes, and just growing as a person outside of academia, which I think is super important. Don't get me wrong, there are sports teams and activities you can join in Japan too, although with going to school, doing sports, and going back to cram school, kids are heading home around 10 o'clock every night. And that's a lot for any student to have to go through. So the question I ask myself is, if kids in America are not in school the same amount of time as their Asian counterparts, then how? How do we leverage the difference in the amount of time spent in class? How do we bridge this achievement gap? While there is no simple solution, one thing we must focus on is the emphasis of quality over quantity. We have to get away from grading and assessing students on how well they are able to mimic and copy the procedures of teachers and say that we are good or not good at math. We have to get away from doing the same repetitive problems over and over again like a robot. As educators, we have to stop saying it's easy, you can do it, because if you do, it creates two problems. One, the student may be trying, but just not getting it. In this case, it creates a loss of self-confidence and belief that they can solve the problem. Two, if it's easy, why bother doing it? What's the joy in completing it? If it's calculation after calculation, problem after problem, a robot can do that. We don't need people to be robots. We need people to be able to grow up and create breakthroughs that enhance our daily lives. We need problem solvers, thinkers, and leaders that will help pave the way for generations to come. Every year, school districts are faced with the decision on the newest technology to purchase, the latest tablets, computers, or software that is supposedly good to integrate into the curriculum. But what if we didn't have those resources? What if we didn't even have a building for a school? just the teacher and the students, outside in any open space we could find. 
I don't believe that our value as educators is the ability to utilize the best resources and technology in the classroom, but rather how we can effectively communicate the resources we have in our mind to challenge student thinking. Can we pose questions, problems, and spark discussions that truly enlighten and challenge the state of a student's mind? Learning math should be an exploration, trying different number combinations and realizing the properties of even and odd numbers, spatial awareness of a three-dimensional shape, and discovering the infinite possibilities of variable x. Instead of saying, it's easy, we need to flip the script by saying, it's tough, these problems are tough, but guess what, you're tougher. When learning math, or anything new for that matter, there has to be an element of struggle, productive struggle, a period of time that you are trying and trying, making progress, but just not getting over that hill. It's like learning to ride a bike for the first time or climbing a tall mountain. You don't learn without falling several dozen times or stop and recalibrate the journey. I have some simple examples I wanted to share with you on how you can add the element of productive struggle in your classrooms today so that students can start thinking at a much higher level. In first grade, there is a lesson on measurement where students use the number of paper clips to find varying length of straight objects. Paper clips are fine, but instead of having straight objects, have students measure bendable objects, nonlinear objects in which students have to ask themselves, hmm, how can I measure this? Which gets the gears turning in their head. This is a fourth grade problem on place value. Instead of doing repetitive practice and memorization on each place value, have students create a four digit number using number cards. All of a sudden, it becomes a fun activity and starts a discussion in a small group where students are competing to create the biggest number possible. Lastly, a fifth grade volume problem. After four to five problems of finding the volume of the same exact shape, it just becomes a calculation practice more than anything. What if there was a cube inside the prism? How would the height be affected once we take the cube out? This is why I started Math Challenge. To me, Math Challenge is more than just a YouTube channel. It is now my lifelong mission to get students enjoying math for the exploration that it offers rather than its simplicity or memorization of formulas. I would like to help students reach a much higher level of critical thinking than they are currently used to. I didn't mean to offend anyone in this video. My intention is to start a discussion on how we can continue to grow as educators and push the boundaries for the future of our children. I am a very average person, educator, and if anyone needs improvement, it's me. And this is why I need your help. Parents, teachers, school administrators, and all educators, please place 1% of the faith you have in me to join me in my mission where kids in America and across the globe can reach a much higher level of mathematical achievement. You can help me by spreading this video, hitting the like button, and subscribing to my channel. But more importantly, I would be happiest if you can try one challenge problem a week, either at home or with the students in your class. The problems don't have to come from my channel. It can be anything you find online, any mathematical challenge that gets kids thinking. Please message me and I would love to see the problems you have done with your students. Together with your help, I know that we can start a math movement, the math challenge movement. Thank you so much.